Yes, my people, it is your boy VRD. We are back for another commentator drive. And before I get into this, I just want to apologize in advance. If you can hear my stomach rumbling in the microphone, I have not had breakfast yet. I repeat, I have not had breakfast yet. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're going to be taking a Gatwick Express Class 387 down from London Victoria to Gatwick Airport non stop. We're going to be going via the fast lands. So it's a journey time of about. 30 minutes. I'd say out of all the routes on trains and world, this is probably the route. Um, this flipping announcer keeps speaking over me. As I was saying, out of all the routes on trains and world, I'd say this is the route that I'm the most familiar with. Um, I, I literally know this route like the back of my hand from Victoria all the way down to Brighton on the fast lines. I can literally drive it with my eyes closed. So yeah, I'm going to show you guys a, a bit of a couple of tips and tricks to drive along this route in a effective manner. First thing we're going to do is perform our back cab checks. I have come in here and set everything up before recording just to save a bit of time. But what you would want to do is just ensure that your driver reminder appliance is set. Ensure that the FNR switch is in the off position. Ensure that no master key is inserted. Ensure that the tail light switch is in the auto or on position and ensure that all of your safety system no sorry ensure that the aws driver safety device and vigilance isolation switches are in the horizontal isolated positions okay that is the back cab check complete final thing we're going to do is check the tail lights of the train to ensure that they're being displayed correctly which they are I'm also going to check that I'm recording because that's my tradition. Yes, we are recording. And we actually don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to sprint to the front of the train <laughs> because the service is due to commence in two minutes' time. And we're actually due out of London, Victoria in four minutes' time. So I'm going to do a ridiculously quick start up. Um, same with the back end of the train. I've actually come up to the front and set everything up beforehand just to make the process a bit quicker. But before entering the front cab, just take a glance at your lights. You should have two tail lights being displayed there. Enter the cab. And the first thing you would do is turn the AWS, DSD and Vigilance Isolation switches into the vertical normal positions. However, I've already come in and done that because that is how you'd find them in real life. They would already be in the normal positions, but in Train Sim World, by default, they're in the horizontal isolated positions so just keep that in mind i'm gonna come in sit in the driver's seat um before keying on just do the same checks that you did at the other end turn on your dra um ensure that no master key is inserted ensure that the fnr switch is in the off position and ensure that the tail light switch is in the auto or on position now gonna insert the master key Move the FNR switch into the neutral position and acknowledge the AWS self-test sequence. So yeah, I'm not sure if you guys heard, but there was a little voice over there that said TPWS and AWS operational. That is fitted to the some of the newer trains that have this newer version of TPWS installed. It's called TPWS Mark IV. Um, I believe the class 700 does that and quite a few other trains. Anyway, we're going to turn the headlight switch into the day running position. And our tail light switch can remain in the auto position. And finally, we're going to set our destination. So we just click PIS there on the TMS. And it's already scored to Gatwick Airport for us. So we're just going to click confirm location. And then click exit. And that should be it. We're just going to go glance at the front of the train. Ensure that... Whoa, okay. <laughs> ensure that everything is... Yep, that looks fine to me. So we have our brighter headlight shining from the non-driver's side. And our not-so-bright LED light shining from the driver's side. Which is the day running configuration. And our um, destination display reads Gatwick Airport. Um, we have a green signal, so I'm going to get the door shut in about 5 seconds time because that would be 30 seconds prior to our departure time. Yep, that looks fine to me. Pressing the door close button. 
in real life here at London Victoria, you'd have a platform dispatcher to help you with the departure process, but we don't have that in train sim world, so I have to do everything by myself. So we're just looking back along the platform again. Our door interlock light has illuminated, just a final look back along the platform. Closing the cab door, I'm actually going to open the windows just so you guys can hear the sounds a bit better. Final glance at the signal and we can glance at our CCTV monitors as well. Resetting the DRA because our signal is displaying a green aspect. FNR switch into forward. And before moving off, I'm going to test the hill start button. So on a class 387, you hold in the hill start button. PBC into the off position. Power notch 1. Then power notch 2. Then release the hill start button. And that is specific to the class 387, I believe. Right guys, so I feel like I could have done a better job at explaining this, but the class 387's hill start button in train sim world functions the exact same way as the hill start buttons of the other electro star units. However, in reality, when you press the hill start button on a class 387, it actually lights up, and while it's lit up, your brake step 1 application is held in. The only way to release the brake step 1 application is to either press the hill start button again, or select power notch 2 so that is why I went into power notch 2 before letting go of the hill start button it's just to have a bit of a more realistic departure but yeah speed limit depart in London Victoria is 20 miles an hour and we need a letter G in the theater box display associated with this signal which we do have that tells us that we've been rooted onto line G, which is the down, bright and fast. Once we got up to 15 miles an hour, I reduced the power to notch 1. Now that we're up to 20 miles an hour, I've shut off the power. So I moved the PBC back into the off position. I feel like a lot of you that are new to train sim world, when you hear me say shutting off the power, you might actually think I'm talking about cutting off like, all the electrical supply to the train. But no, shutting off the power simply means I'm no longer accelerating. So yeah. Just passed the board with the number 40 on it so our speed limit will be increasing to 40 miles an hour once the back of our train has cleared that board and our speed has rolled down to 15 miles an hour because we're on a bit of an upward gradient leaving Victoria station so I've just applied power notch 1 to help us creep back up to 20 miles an hour we also need to perform a running brake test at 30 miles an hour but the running brake test should not be commenced on an upward gradient, either a downward gradient or level terrain. So what I'm going to do is slowly accelerate up to 30 miles an hour just to give us a bit of time to clear this upward gradient here. So we're now on level terrain as we cross over the River Thames here, but the back of our train is still going to be on that upward gradient. So yeah, just using power notches one and two to slowly creep up to 30 miles an hour. We should now be clear of the upward gradient. So I've shut off the power, going to make an immediate brake step two application. Just to observe our speed fall by 10 miles an hour, which is fine. Releasing the brakes and I'm going to select power notch two. Speed limit is now 45 miles an hour. It increased to 45 miles an hour at the top of that upward gradient. So just before we crossed over the River Thames. And this is Battersea Park Station coming up. Although the speed limit is 45 miles an hour, I'm actually going to shut off the power at 40 miles an hour here. And that is due to the fact that we're about to enter a downward gradient. 
So that should cause our speed to naturally roll up to 45. So between London, Victoria and Sawhurst, we're going to be travelling over a section of track that I previously covered in my Victoria to Rygate video. After Sawhurst, we're going to be on new territory, unseen territory. So you can see we've been on the downward gradient for quite a while. It's starting to level off now. We're now running parallel with the southwestern lands and our speed has rolled up to 45 miles an hour. So we just passed a little board with the number 60 on it down at ground level so that tells us that our speed limit is now 60 miles an hour. What I'm actually going to do is just apply a power notch 2. And that is just going to allow us to slowly accelerate up to 60 miles an hour just to just to allow us to drive in a bit of a, a more controlled manner. This is Clapham Junction Station coming up. Sometimes when you have the windows open and you try to sound the horn, the sound gets a bit glitched. So yeah, if you guys heard the horn sounding a bit funny, that's why. So we're up to about 57 miles an hour. I believe as we passed through Clapham Junction Station we entered a shallow upward gradient and we're still on that upward gradient now. I think we're going to be on that until we get to Balham Station. Wandsworth Common is the next station we're going to be passing through. After Wandsworth Common the shallow upward gradient becomes a steep upward gradient into Balham Station. And then after Balham Station, it levels off. So yeah, I'm just using Power Notch 1 to help us maintain 60 miles an hour. Speed limit will be increasing to 70 miles an hour at the other side of Wandsworth Common Station. My speed's starting to fall off a bit, so I've just gone up to Power Notch 2 just in an effort to help us maintain 60 miles an hour. And you can see we just passed a little board there with the number 70 on it. So our speed limit is now 70 miles an hour. I'm going straight into power notch four, full power, whatever you want to call it. And we're now climbing a steep upward gradient into Balham station here. And you can see the sun shining over there to the left. In real life, that would have blinded me. I would have had to pull down the sun visor. But in transient mode, it doesn't really do that. So we're up to about 67 miles an hour. So I've just gone back down to power notch 2. I'm actually going to go back down to power notch 1. And we're now on fairly level terrain. We're no longer on an upward gradient. So power notch one seems to be maintaining us at 70 miles an hour and 
I'm gonna momentarily shut off the power because we were starting to creep above 70 miles an hour. So I've just shut off the power to allow our speed to roll off a bit. This is Shurem Common Station that we're now passing through. And between Shirtham Common and Norbury Station, we're going to be climbing another steep upward gradient. So I'm probably going to use Power Notch 2 just to help us maintain 70 miles an hour. And after Norbury Station, there's actually a little trick that I want to show you guys. And I need to think ahead in terms of my commentary to try and explain this trick to you. So I've gone into Power Notch 2 now. You can see our speeds roll down to 67 miles an hour. Just, that's just because of the upward gradient that we're currently on, climbing into Norby Station. This is Norby Station that we're passing through now. So we're now on a short downward gradient passing through Norby Station. The summit of the gradient was just before Norby Station, so our speed has now gone back up to 70 miles an hour. So I've moved the PBC back into the off position. Now from about here, so just after you pass through Norbury Station, providing you're traveling at 70 miles an hour, you can leave the PBC in the off position for quite a while. Next station is Fulton Heath, then after that is Selhurst. After Selhurst, no, just before Selhurst, the speed limit falls to 60 miles an hour. Station after Selhurst is East Craden, and just before East Craden, the speed limit falls to 45 miles an hour. Now, like I said, providing you're doing um, 70 miles an hour, you can move the PBC into the off position just after passing through Norbury Station and your speed is going to automatically um, correct itself for the upcoming speed limits. You think I'm making this up, but I'll show you guys. I'll literally show you guys what I'm on about. So we just passed through Fulton Heath Station. Our speed is rolling downwards. We're now doing 60 miles an hour. Fulton Heath, between Norbury and Fulton Heath, that is fairly level terrain, but we're now on a bit of an upward gradient into Selhurst Station here. So our speed is starting to roll off a bit. And you can see we just passed the board with the number 60 on it. So our speed limit has fallen to 60 miles an hour. This is Soho Station we're passing through now. And I'm going to continue to let our speed fall off. We're still on quite a steep upward gradient, but we're about to cross over the summit for that. Whoa, is that? Oh, <laughs> I thought that was a, um, a Thameslink 700 for a sec, but it's not. So our speed limit's falling to 50 miles an hour. Sorry, not our speed limit. Our speed has fallen to 50 miles an hour. Speed limit is still currently 60 miles an hour. But it's about to reduce to 45 miles an hour. You can see our speed has fallen to 47. Forty-six, and yeah, we're down to forty-five miles an hour, and the speed limit, the forty-five mile an hour speed limit, commences here. Literally, like I said, you shut off the power at Norbury Station, and your speed comes down for the forty-five mile an hour into East Crater Station. Bang on! So yeah, that's a little trick I thought I'd show you guys. This is East Crater Station we're passing through now. If you was to stop at East Croydon Station, I'd say make a break step one application at that bridge. There was a little overbridge that we passed underneath just before the commencement of the 45 mile an hour speed limit. I normally get a break step one application in from there, providing I'm doing 45 miles an hour. And that brings me into East Croydon on a decent deceleration curve. Speed limit is about to increase to 60 miles an hour. OK, 
Okay, so the back of our chain is now clear of that board. So I'm going to make a power notch two application. And that's just going to help us accelerate up to 60 miles an hour in a controllable manner. This is South Craden Station that we're about to pass through. On the other side of South Craden Station, the speed limit increases to 90 miles an hour. So once we enter the 90 mile an hour zone, I'm going to go into full power. You can see we're up to 50 miles an hour. I'm going to go up to power notch 3 from now. And here's the 90 board coming up. So I'm just going to go straight into full power because by the time we clear that board, um, sorry, we're not going to reach 60 before clearing that board, I should say. So yeah, we're only up to 60 miles an hour now. Full steam ahead. This is Pearly Oak Station that we're passing through. This is Pearly Station that we're passing through. So since East Craden Station, we've been on a fairly shallow upward gradient. And I'd say from here up to Quarry Tunnel, which is about a mile and a half, two miles from here, we're going to be on a fairly steep upward gradient. So I'm going to be bouncing between power notches two and four just to maintain 90 miles an hour. So we're still in power notch 4 at the moment, but I may need to reduce it to power notch 3 in a sec. Yeah, it's a very, very severe gradient. We're climbing over what's known as the North Downs at the moment. It's a massive, it's more or less the Himalayas of Southern England. So I've gone back down to, I've gone down to power notch 2 just to stop us from exceeding the 90 mile an hour speed limit but I may need to increase that in a sec yeah I'm gonna go back into full power now And I'm going to show you guys another trick. So providing that you're doing 90 miles an hour. When you pass this. Where is it? There should be a speed board with the number 90 on it. Yeah so when you pass this board here. Shut off your power. 
Remember, that's providing you're doing 90 miles an hour. And then your speed is going to roll down to 85 miles an hour. But once it does roll down to 85 miles an hour, you're going to pass over the summit of the gradient and you're going to be on a fairly steep downward gradient and that's going to cause your speed to roll up back to 90 miles an hour. So the reason we do that is because it stops you from having to use the brakes. Because as you can imagine, if you just maintain 90 miles an hour and then you enter a downward gradient, your speed is going to naturally want to roll above 90 miles an hour due to gravity. And you're going to have to use the brakes to stop yourself exceeding the speed limit. But by doing this, we can avoid all of that. So it just cuts down on the wear and tear of the train. So that was quarry tunnel that we just passed through. We're now on a downward gradient. The summit for that gradient is inside quarry tunnel. So from East Croydon to here, we we're climbing up the North Downs, but now climbing down the North Downs. Can you climb down something? Yes, you can climb down something. <laughs> we're now climbing down the North Downs into Gatwick Airport. So yeah, the North Downs, they're literally a massive literally the Himalayas of southern England that's the best way I can describe it and as you can see our speed is starting to roll back up towards 90 miles an hour we're still in the off position However, our speed limit is going to decrease to 80 miles an hour very shortly. So I'm going to need to make a brake step one application just to bring us down for that. But the duration of the 80 mile an hour speed limit is quite short. So you can see we've got a warning board regarding that 80 mile an hour speed reduction. So shortly after entering this tunnel, I'm going to make a brake step one application. And that normally brings us down for the 80 mile an hour speed limit on a decent deceleration curve. Yep, we're down to 80, so I'm releasing the brakes. You can see we just passed the board there, so the speed limit is now 80 miles an hour. Speed limit is now going back up to 90 miles an hour, so I've gone into full power. And over to the right is Oldswood Station. So we're now running parallel with the slow lines once again. The slow lines broke away from us shortly after Pearly Station. And they were running not too far away from us, but not right next to us either. But yeah, we're now running parallel to them, but they're on the other side. They're on the they're on our right hand side now. We passed over them shortly before entering Quarry Tunnel. So, oh, I applied the blades. <laughs> I applied the brakes by accident. Though. So yeah, we're now we're now on. It's a it's a bit of a shallow downward gradient. That tunnel that we passed through not long ago that was Red Hill Tunnel. So after that tunnel, the the gradient goes from a steep downward gradient to a fairly shallow downward gradient. So from here, I'd say accelerate up to about 88 miles an hour and then just shut off your power and then your speed will slowly creep upwards towards 90. And Gatwick Airport Station isn't too far from here. Let me just check what platform. Okay, so we'll get with Airport platform five. It 
if we had been assigned to Gatwick Airport Platform 6, we would have to slow our speed down to 30 miles an hour for the move into Platform 6. But because we're going into Platform 5, we're still going to have to slow down for the station regardless, but the speed limit through Platform 5 is 90 miles an hour. Speed limit into Platform 6 is 30 miles an hour. So yeah, just keep that in mind. So about here, I'm going to make a break step one application to begin decelerating for Gatwick Airport. This is Holy Station that we're passing through now. So the signal protecting Holy Station around there is a good place to get your break step one application in for Gatwick Airport, providing you're doing 90 miles an hour, of course. This is the signal protecting Gatwick Airport Station and as you can see we have a number 5 in the theatre box display. So that tells us we've been routed into platform 5. And I'm going to momentarily need to increase the braking force to brake step 2. Also known as 50% braking. I'm going to do that about now. You can see we had the little 30 board down there with the arrow pointing to the left. So that tells us that the speed limit into platform 6 over there is 30 miles an hour, as I said before. So I'm, I'm momentarily up the braking force to 50%, but I've gone back down to 25%. Just going to up it to 50% again momentarily, back down to 25%. down to about five miles an hour so i'm just going to release the brakes and crawl up to the stopping position it's a quick burst of brake step one there just to there we go and the final burst of brake step one brings us to a stop brake step three fnr switch into neutral um because we are going to be shutting down our cab I'm just going to set the driver reminder appliance and we have a door release on the left okay so that actually felt quite quick <laughs> cool anyway we're going to go through the shutdown procedure of the cab now so first thing I'm going to do is close these windows next I'm going to Move the FNR switch into the off position. Remove the master key. Ensure that the tail light switch is in the auto or on position, which it is. And on a class 3 or 7, um, your headlight switch can actually remain in the day running, markers only or night running position. But I'm just going to move it into the off position. So it's a bit similar to a 700 um, where you can have the headlight switch in um, one of the head configurations. But... It will automatically revert to tail lights when the master key no when the fnr switch is moving into the off position on a class 377 it doesn't do that final thing we're going to do is isolate our aws dsd and vigilance isolation switches we're then going to exit the cab and take a glance at our tail lights, ensure that they're being displayed correctly, which they are. So that concludes this commentated run down from London Victoria to Gatwick Airport. I'd like to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. And if you'd like to support the channel, consider like, liking and subscribing. <laughs> Constructive feedback and criticism is also more than welcome and appreciated in the comment section below. I will catch you guys in the next one. Love.